Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're back with mods, tools, add-ons and enhancements and today we're primarily focusing on scenery. We're going to be checking out a couple of different airport adjustments um, whether it be lights, textures, surrounding areas and then we're also going to be checking out a cool recording tool that I reviewed once before but has come through um, some very serious enhancements. So make sure you guys stick around because I think you're really going to enjoy this one and you might find some value in something that you didn't have before. Let's get started. So the first add-on that we're going to look at or modification we're going to see is a U.S. Airports Layout Enhancement. We're here looking at KTUS Kilo Tango Uniform Sierra or Tucson International in Arizona. And what this add-on or modification essentially does is lays the airports out more accurately to real world, meaning taxi lines, runways, fixes runway textures. Um, you know, if the runways are bumpy, you know, for example, here, 29 or right is a runway that you would never want to go down unless you were in a dune buggy um, prior to this update. Ever since the add-on, the runway is now smooth and flat and as it should be. Um, the taxiway lines are much more defined and actually line you up with the center of the runway, as you would expect. Um, and just a really nice enhancement all said and done. So here's the before. And now we're looking, oh, one more, sorry. <laughs> Here is the after. And there are some texture issues, but these are things, that obviously, this is a work in progress. This guy working on his free time. This is a free add-on. But you can see the texture lines and the taxiway lines, for me, I feel like, look much better, much easier to see, much more realistic to what I would expect to see. Um, and uh, more accurate to what's truly out there. And again, the runway textures were fixed. There isn't any bumps or ramps, things that would uh, bounce you up in the air as uh, when you're not expecting it. Again, link to this can be found in the description down below. I highly recommend you guys give it a shot and see if there's airports and that you like to fly at. And then I also recommend you guys make sure to make a comment if there's an airport that's missing that you'd like to see as my airport was done by request. So to the developer, thank you very much. I think you've done a fantastic job and I look forward to seeing what you have in the future. Continuing with airport enhancements on the next mod, we're going to be taking a look at night lighting for airports. This is again done by request. This is still at Tucson International in Arizona. And you can see that the lighting on the terminals and in the parking areas just are not realistic. It would not be this dark out here. But when you add the mod, you can see things look much more realistic. I can tell you that flying into Tucson tonight, just checking it out, looked absolutely fantastic. You could see the gates and see the terminals as you were flying in and coming in on your approach. Very, very well done. Very nice enhancement. Again, if the airport that you're looking for is not available, be sure to comment on the post at FlightSim.2 requesting an airport, and I bet the developer will eventually get to it. He's done a fantastic job, and again, I cannot wait to see how much further this package continues to grow. Link down in the description. Now, sticking with the light theme, we have the light mod for the Just Flight Piper Arrow. Um, as you can see here, this is the default lighting inside the cockpit. It's very, very bright. Things get very washed out. It looks very unrealistic, um, in my opinion. And you can see that uh, it just it doesn't have a very good feel to it. However, modded, this looks much more realistic. The lights are, this is almost at full brightness. You'll see me dim them up and down here a second for you guys, and I'll also get the console lights. There we go. Um, or the radio stack. And you can see just everything just looks much more natural. The lighting isn't overpowering. It never gets washed out. I highly recommend this mod, especially if you do any night flying in the Piper Arrow. As always, link down in the description below. And next on our list is a payware software or a payware add-on that enhances the coastline of Italy. Um, what you're about to see here is footages in the default and then we will switch over to the add-on. 
the developer is working on dramatically enhancing the coastline of Italy. Boats, ships, rocks, lighthouses, you name it. Um, you can see that the default scenery is very dry, very bland. There's nothing really going on. Um, <clears throat> why I put the airport in here, I'm not quite sure, but it didn't need to be there. <laughs> Apparently, I was getting a shot of something I didn't think I was getting a shot of. But anyway, this uh, scenery is very, very gorgeous, and he's done multiple locations. And what I'm showing you here, this is the add-on right here. You can see that the water comes to life. Look at the docks down there in the background, all the boats and the water. Here we can see a lighthouse down there in the middle of the water there near on top of some rocks. Again, there's that same dock. You have cruise ships out there. You have searchlights going on on the dock area. Um, just truly enhances. And I'm only showing you guys two locations. Lima, India, Romeo, Papa is what we're looking at here. And uh, it just looks absolutely fantastic. And I, I focus primarily here on the night lighting because the night lighting is just it's phenomenal. I loved flying through here at night. It was cool just cruising around it. Um, and then here we are at Lima, India, Mike Juliet. Again, back with the default view. Again, look at those docks. Look at the water. There's absolutely nothing going on there. There isn't any indication of any real life happening down uh, in the water and on the coastline there. Okay, same shot at night. Again, no life. Got, sure, you got lights, but that's all that we have. And I focus on things like this. I love immersion. Anything that adds to the immersion and scenery is everything in simulation. Okay, if you, if you don't have the scenery, if you don't have life going on around you, then you, know, you still walk away with that arcade feeling. Now here we are again, back with the mod. Again, Lima, India, Mike, Juliet. You can see the cruise ships over there parked in the water on the, on the, on the side there. You can see searchlights going on around us. The docks have activity. The cranes are lit up. Um, we can see traffic you know, in, in the docking area. These are things that make a huge difference in my personal opinion. Um, they really add a lot, even in the daylight. It still just looks like there's actually things going on. It's nice to see boats both in the docks. It looks like we're boats coming out of the docks. Now they're not moving and that's totally fine. You know, that's something that, you know, we're just have to deal with, but any adjustment is definitely a very nice improvement. And I think there's been a lot of hard work done here. And uh, I can tell you from my experience, as weird as it sounds, flying through here was really, really awesome. Now this add-on can be found on Sim Market link down in the description below. Make sure you guys at least check out the link, check out all the uh, areas that they are doing. I only showed you two. Okay, there are far more than that. They're planning to do the entire coastline of Italy um, and then some surrounding areas as well as some national markings, um, some historical places like Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu? God, I can't say it. Um, but um, I really recommend this, guys. You know, anything that enhances the scenery out there of this quality and makes it this much fun just to look around, that's what, in my opinion, the simming is all about. That's where you get the immersions, when you can look out the window and see something that makes you just go, wow. Anyway, consider checking them out, guys. This is a work in progress, but be sure to support them so that work continues. And let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, so for the last mod I want to talk about, or tool, I should say, that I want to talk about today is the app called the Sky Dolly. It is a freeware uh, flight recorder <clears throat> that has really come a long way. I didn't initially recommend it simply because of the fact it just wasn't at the same point that some of that one of the other mods was for. Um, I did a review on it. It's a good one, but it just didn't have a lot of the features that some of the other ones. However... That game seems to be changing dramatically. So one of the things that I love about it, it about it is that when you start recording, it generates a new database file. Where this becomes into advantage is that you can do this. This is exactly the reason why I had not recommended it previously over, for example, FS Playground. FS Playground has one of my favorite features on it, and that is that it remembers the aircraft position and you can save those locations. Now, what I don't know yet is if there's a way to edit these. Well, there's actually a title field right here, so I'm assuming that there is. But um, we'll have to go back. Oh, double click it to edit. <laughs> Asking ye shall receive. Okay, so you can edit this to whatever you'd like. So I can type KTUS runway. Uh, we can even do runway 11 left. And boom, now I can save this. So here's where this is cool. 
The other thing that it did not used to do when, for when I first reviewed it was it did not track. Um, I hate it when it does. This. Oh, that's why. It did not track aircraft control position. Where, for example, we can see that the flaps should be at takeoff flaps. I did not put them there at the time that I started this recording. And at the time that I started this recording, I had just started the aircraft. Hence why things like this. By the way, the auto start actually started this aircraft. And yet we still have the pressurization off. Uh, autopilot yaw damper should be off. That's good. Auto select. Oh. Fuel pump. Okay. All right. Yeah, or fuel tank. Anyway, that's beside the point. So here's the cool part. Now we can hit play. So we can come outside. And it does this very, very nicely. So I'll go ahead and bring this up on the screen. And I'm just going to hit play. Now there may be some stuttering, guys. I don't think it's the recorder. MSFS has been doing this to me the last couple of days. Um, and especially when I've had it running for a while, which I've had it running virtually all day long today. Let's pull this off the screen for a second, and I'll show you how we can move everything around. Oops. That was if I stay with the aircraft. Now you can see it's running very smoothly. I can move the aircraft around or the camera around, no problems. There's the gear coming up, no problems there. And in many ways, it's actually running much better than some of its competitors. Um, again, see like that stuttering there? I don't think it has anything to do with the recording software. It's the crap that my... Uh, my Microsoft Flight Simulator has been doing today, which is weird because I was testing DCS earlier just to check it in VR and Mac settings. It was running smooth as glass, so I don't know what it is yet, but we'll deal with that at a later time. So anyway, get that, but then I can also take the slider, and if we want, so now we've reached the end of that recording, I can go back here and just hold it for a second. Give it a second for the gear to come down. Sometimes you have to do this for a minute, but it does fix itself. And there we go. We're back down there. The flaps are down again. This is one of the better operating recorders that I've seen. Um, and it's completely free. You can find a link to it down in the description below, and it's on flexim.2, uh, the website. Um, hats off to the creator. This is, this is absolutely fantastic. The progress that this software has made is fantastic. The <clears throat> It seems silly, but being able to save the aircraft location is a huge deal, guys. And, and I highly recommend, if you guys try this, to take advantage of this. Because this is not aircraft restricted. I can load up the A320 right now, and it will. I can click on this, and it will send it to the same position. Um, so, well, at least I don't think so. I mean, this one says TVM 930, but maybe that was just the initial aircraft it was recorded in. Let's find out. Let's test that together. Okay, so I decided that the A320 was actually probably a really unfair comparison given all the different flight variables that exist with it, or control variables. So we're going to try this one with the DA62. So we're going to hit load. And we're going to give it a second to load the scenery. Again, trying to be fair here. Got to give it time to do its thing. I'm going to pull this off screen for just a second. And so what it will do when it does this is move it forward a little bit. Okay, sounds horrible, but let's unpause. And there we are. All wheels on the ground. Flaps are set. Center line is being maintained. It's following perfect recording. It's actually doing a very beautiful job of it. Now, the one thing that you'll have to watch out for if you're doing a recording like this 
is airspeed restrictions, takeoff speeds, things like that. Because like we're probably rotating at 90 knots, just like we did in the TVM. But control surface is working just fine. Should see those flaps come up any second. There they go. And the aircraft is airborne. But what's an advantage here, and the reason why I like these kind of situations, to show you one more thing, is if we bring it back down again, let the gear come down. The reason why I love these particular apps and their features like this, okay, is I can come into the seat here, I'm on the runway like I should be, I can hit stop, Ugh. and that was my own damn fault, I didn't have my feet on the brakes, I didn't have my feet even on the rudder pedals, but hopefully you guys saw the advantage there. I can fly one particular flight in one aircraft and think that that was really cool. I really like this location. Oh, I want to make this part easier for me. I want to create a couple of approach positions, whatever it may be. At X altitude, I want to save this location. And then you can go into any other aircraft you want and load that particular scenario. We could title this Tucson Approach if we wanted to, and we wanted to, you know, be 3,000 feet in the air, 10 miles, you know, practicing your approaches, whatever. Um, tons of different variables so I highly recommend that you guys give this a shot again it's completely free I know a lot of people are waiting for um, you know a Sobo to put out their recorder but my thing is this one's free it works fantastic it's lightweight I have seen no CPU usage increase I haven't seen any um, loss of frame rate when using it it's running exactly the same as it is before um, I really recommend this guys so uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to try it out. And uh, as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. It's been a very long week, so I hope you guys have a great, relaxing weekend. And I will see you next time.